Hi guys, welcome back to our series of Azure Active Directory and in this video I'm going to talk about the comparison between ADFS and Azure Active Directory. Now if you're watching the series from the beginning, in the last video I have discussed how you can configure hybrid Azure AD join if you have federated domains. Whereas the agenda of this video will be knowing the architectural differences between ADFS and Azure Active Directory how to access the federation metadata endpoint of your Azure Active Directory, what is the purpose of having dedicated federation metadata binded with every Azure Active Directory, what are the different endpoints available, which endpoint an application should access if they are using certain protocols, or where they can find relative information. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about is Home Realm Discovery. Now my agenda for telling you guys all this to build the logical understanding of endpoints and how the authentication works because when we'll talk about conditional access whatever I will be telling you in this particular video will make a lot of sense. Now before we move on and understanding everything how it works in Azure Active Directory let's just have a quick recap of how things were working in our ADFS environment. So in our on-prem environment, we had apps and they were contacting certain endpoints of our ADFS servers, depending upon the protocol that they are using. And then ADFS was getting the credentials verified and then a respective token was being sent to the applications. But before the token was sent to the application, there was something which was done by ADFS and that is conditional access. Yes, you got me right. Conditional access is not something new. We have been dealing with conditional access from a long period of time because we were creating different claim rules on our relying party trust. For example, a user, if it is coming from a specific location and this user is a part of, let's say, a group named as ABC, then only the access should be allowed. This means what? In a nutshell, you are defining conditions wherein the authorization part is enabled and it is decided whether a user should get access or not. So depending upon the claim provider trust configuration when it comes to claim rules, a certain token is being issued to the application as well as it is decided whether the user is supposed to access this application or not. So conditional access is not new. The fact of allowing or blocking unauthorized access or defining access for different platforms is being introduced in Azure Active Directory by the name of conditional access, wherein you have different parameters on behalf of which you can define a logic. That's the actual purpose. But if we talk about our on-prem environment from this particular deck, and if we talk about ADFS getting combined with Azure Active Directory, what all we were getting? We were getting directory services, wherein we were creating user objects and group objects, as well as our ADFS was acting as an identity provider for those applications who understand claim-based identities. That means any application who, which uses, let's say, SAML, WS, Fed, OAuth, or OpenID Connect, they can contact ADFS to get the authentication completed. But let's say we have two different organizations, Contoso and Test, what is the traditional environment that they will have their own dedicated AD and their own ADFS servers. And the best part is that both of their ADFS will have different endpoints. That means the, their environment is isolated. The ADFS of Contoso will have different endpoints. The ADFS of test will have different endpoints. And the fact is that they can have a trust in between, but if we talk about the initial point, there are two different environments. And the best part is that Contoso.com ADFS will be able to serve authentication request 
with the same potential what the ADFS of test corporation has. Now what do I mean by this that Contoso can have n number of applications which are contacting Contoso ADFS to get the authentication done. The same scenarios apply for test as well. Test corporation can have their own dedicated applications which are getting used there in, in their enterprise and they have to contact a test ADFS and the authentication will be done. Now if we give this process a term which is very much relatable, you can think of this as identity as a service which Contoso and Test were providing to all the applications which are contacting their own dedicated ADFS server. Now, why I'm emphasizing so much on this term, which is identity as a service, because whenever you will read any article of Azure Active Directory, this is a very common term that you guys might have read. One more common term that you guys might have read is Azure Active Directory is Microsoft's multi-tenant cloud-based solution. Now, without making it complex, let's understand this from a simple English statement and that is multiple here means that there are n number of directories which are created in Azure Active Directory as a service and every directory is isolated. Just replace tenant with directory keyword and cloud based means no infra required. So you don't need any on-prem infra to use Azure Active Directory. And solution here means that Azure Active Directory is capable enough to provide you directory solutions. That means you can create user objects, group objects or different kind of objects as well as your Azure Active Directory can act as an identity provider or SDS. So this is the simplest term of how Azure Active Directory is being presented or is being uh, used from different service perspective what all it can do. Now let's try to relate Azure Active Directory with ADFS and then it will make a lot more sense. So these two corporations that we had Contoso and Test, they have subscribed for Azure Active Directory or they have subscribed for any of the Microsoft online service and Azure Active Directory is created by default. If we talk about our on-prem environment, we have dedicated links. Uh, that means we have dedicated endpoint of our ADFS org specific. But what will happen when Azure Active Directory is created for these two corporations? The very first fundamental that we know is that in Azure Active Directory, there is no trust between two different directories. B2B is different, but there is no as such logical trust which we used to have in our on-prem environment. But the fact is that out of the box, Azure Active Directory will give you the privilege to create identities, users and groups, and n number of different objects. But when we talk about this from, a, from an authentication perspective, apart from giving you the privilege to create identities, there is a dedicated STS instance binded with every Azure Active Directory. Now, what do I mean by this? That when you create an Azure Active Directory and when you create user objects, when any user tries to sign in, the very first thing that you will see that, let's say that the user is trying to go to portal.azure.com. The link that you'll see in the top will be login.microsoftonline.com, but that doesn't have the custom branding that you have embedded. That only comes when you type your username and password. And that is something which will make you let you know that what do I mean by a dedicated SDS service? As of now, just think of this as whenever any company subscribes for Azure Active Directory, every directory has a dedicated directory service. That means you can create user objects and you can create identities. Similarly, they have a dedicated SDS instance as well. Now, to make you guys understand what I am saying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to portal.azure.com and then I'll show you how you can find all this information. So this is my browser and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type portal.azure.com. Now I will be redirected to an endpoint which will have common, as you can see it has common keywords. Okay, now what if I replace this with my domain name? 
what you will see is the custom branding of my tenant is loaded now what do i mean by this that when i'm typing portal.azure.com i'm dedicated or i'm being redirected to an endpoint which is a common endpoint now whatever upn i will type over here there is a process of home realm discovery which happens wherein this particular endpoint decides where the request has to be routed so now if i type a domain which is federated you'll see a redirect happening here because this common endpoint is redirecting me to my adfs but what happens if you will use a managed domain now what you have to understand that for managed domain the authentication is getting processed by login.microsoftonline.com itself that's the reason why you see custom branding though it is showing common here but if i do conceptswork.com i'll get the same page now what i'll do is i'll sign in and then i will show you where all information is mentioned and how you can find all this relative information whatever i'm saying so understand this that this is my azure active directory and i'm creating user objects and group objects and different direct identities here that means azure active directory is providing me a service which is directory service itself right but what if I want to know how the authentication is working how come azure active directory can act as an identity provider so for that just click on endpoints and then check all these endpoints one of the most important endpoint that you should take care of is this federation metadata endpoint now if i copy this value from here and if i try to open this in a browser what you will see is the federation metadata of my tenant wherein I have verified conceptswork.com as a domain. But what if I just replace this good value with let's say common. As you can see, I'm getting a common federation metadata of Azure Active Directory as a service, not specific to my tenant. Now I'll tell you the differences, how, how will you identify all these differences because when you will check this entity ID in your own federation metadata, that means of your own directory, what you'll see here, a tenant ID getting mentioned and here in common, it will show you tenant ID itself. You see this tenant ID as a variable or as a placeholder wherein this value gets stamped for every tenant. Now, I'll show you something which was there in our ADFS and then it will make a lot more sense. If you remember this value of entity ID which we used to get in our ADFS servers, this was actually matching with Federation Service Identifier. That means what for every instance of ADFS, this value was different or for every instance of ADFS farm, this value was same. So if I have adfs.conceptswork.com, this value will be something like adfs.conceptswork.com but let's say there is a different farm named as idp.conceptswork.com then this value will be idp.conceptswork.com in the similar way to differentiate between different azure active directory this entity id will always be different so now instead of common if i type the name of one of my other directory, which is let's say mcasmip.onmicrosoft.com, you'll see I'm getting a different value now. So this is how the instance of STS for every Azure Active Directory is different. And all these endpoints that are getting listed in, in, in the Federation metadata will be processing authentication. So if you see this, this is the endpoint that will be accessed by WS Fed application. These are the endpoints which will be accessed by, let's say, SAML applications. So as you can see, I'm getting SAML2 here. This has this particular GUID. But if I go to my other Federation metadata, which is of my other tenant, you'll see this endpoint to be different. So that's, that's exactly what I'm trying to express here, that for every Azure Active Directory, there is a different instance of STS which gets the authentication processed. Whereas there is a listing of common endpoints as well. Now, this was something which was more moreover related to WS Fed and SAML application, but 
what if your application wants to use OAuth and OpenID Connect? In that case, you can refer to this endpoint, which is named as well-known configuration. This is something which is related only for OAuth and OpenID Connect and which will give you the list of all the endpoints which are supported by these two protocols as well as response type supported. All the other information that is required only from OAuth and OpenID Connect perspective. So now let's understand what all is happening under the hood that for ADFS, we were sharing federation metadata with application vendors in the similar way, you will share the federation metadata of your Azure Active Directory with your application vendor so that the application vendor will send the authentication request dedicated to your own tenant. Now, what do I mean by this? To access the federation metadata from this particular link, just replace this value from your tenant ID. Now, where you can find this information, for that, just go to your Azure Active Directory and click on Properties. And here itself, you'll get your directory ID, which will be same. As you can see, 790528. And if I go back here, it says 790528. So this is how you can get the directory ID. Just replace the directory ID here with your own directory ID or type in your domain name and give this link to your application vendors and they'll get the federation metadata of your tenant. But now the question comes, what is the purpose of this common endpoint? So common endpoint or common keyword instead of directory ID is actually used when you are planning to develop a multi-tenant application. That means you'll send the redirect to Azure Active Directory on common endpoint, and then depending upon the UPN suffix of the user, the request will be redirected to the respective instance of Azure Active Directory. So what will be the behavior in a nutshell that my application, let's say, is app.conceptswork.com and I have redirected the request to login.microsoftonline.com, common endpoint, and the user is typing user at the rate conceptswork.com. Then the user should get redirected to the STS instance of Azure Active Directory where this user exists. Okay. So, in a nutshell, common endpoint is more over used for multi tenant application, and this deck actually shows you what will be the process of home realm discovery user goes to app.conceptswork.com the request will get re redirected to common endpoint now if the user types let's say user at the red con .com, the request reaches the endpoint of contoso directory if the user types user at the red test.com the request reaches the endpoint of test azure active directory and this process is, is also known as home realm discovery so in a nutshell if we do a comparison of on-prem as compared to azure active directory both of them offering directory services as well as in azure active directory we have a dedicated sts instance binded with every azure active directory whereas in on-prem the claim based identity was more overtaken care by adfs you can access your ADFS federation metadata from a particular endpoint that's available on your ADFS itself. Similarly, you can get the same set of information in Azure Active Directory as well. So let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed. We have discussed the architectural differences between ADFS and Azure Active Directory. What are the endpoints supported? What are the protocols supported? And a simple authentication difference, how it used to happen in ADFS and now how it is happening in Azure Active Directory with the help of common and dedicated STS instance of every Azure Active Directory. In the next video, I'm going to talk about conditional access and an introductory comparison between how the conditional access was calculated in ADFS, what are the parameters, and how it will be done in Azure Active Directory. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for your time. If you have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any feedback, query, or suggestion, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Thank you so much.